Well, it's great to welcome you here to Thank you. Cookson and Clegg in sunny Blackburn. Nice to get to show you where I work for once, having been to your Indeed. wonderful factory several times. I have a few pairs of your shoes. Um, I think I have five pairs of five your pairs. shoes. Five pairs of your shoes. Well, we both sort of share this sort of passion for manufacturing in the UK. Obviously, Trickers has been around for nearly 200 years and still making things in, in, in the way that we always have done. Well, it's always lovely to see your place and see, you know, to see something go from a flat sheet of leather yeah. to a beautiful pair of shoes at the end of it. Well, there's not many of us left in Northampton that are still making 100%. People that buy Trickers, are, you know, they, they buy it as an investment. They really treasure them. There's 260 individual processes, you know, jobs, bits yeah. being done to those shoes. And, you know, might look a lot of money to a lot of pe people yeah. to, to invest in that, at the, at, you know, up front. But, you know, they will, they will literally last you a lifetime. We have a finite number of shoes we can make. Our production line is very limited to the uh, the, set, the size of the factory, the number of opportunities that we've got. We've been in Blackburn since 1860, so we're not, we're no spring chicken. Around 70% of the world's cotton textiles were made within 30, 40 miles of here, which is an incredible thing. And about 600,000 people were employed in textile manufacturing in this county alone. And all the things that we're thinking and talking about doing to make our industry more sustainable and more ethical are all really things that were done mm. until 40, 50 years ago mm. as a matter of course. Everybody fixed their clothes, everybody used natural materials, everybody made things to, to last. And you know, I think the, the big challenge for me as, a, as somebody in the clothing industry is to try and spread this message that you can buy, buy something buy fewer things but buy better things and make sure that those things last and if you can do that you can feel very proud of the way you kind of treat the planet in terms of the clothing that you own. You know we haven't been very good at this we've accepted mediocrity in the products that we buy or a lot of people have and well, again I think a lot of people don't even know how mediocre the things they are buying are because they've never had the opportunity to wear something that's of real quality I think a lot of people growing up now will only ever have worn polyester clothes. They will only ever have worn shoes that are glued together and made out of polyurethane. They would never know how amazing it feels to have something that gets better and better every time you wear it. And I think that's really sad. There are clearly people who are changing large parts of the way they live in order to try and protect the planet. Mm. But those same people are still shopping with fast fashion brands who are you know, paying lip service. You know, there's a lot of greenwashing in the world of, 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 of clothing right now. But I don't think there is any doubt in my mind that the direction of travel is towards consuming less, consuming only better things, and, and that is because we are all aware that the planet we live on is, you know, is under threat. You know, we are living in a climate emergency, and if we don't change our habits, we will wreck the planet for good. I would rather have, you know, a tiny handful of, of incredibly precious things that were beautifully made and got better and better with age. I've got clothes that were my dad's, I've got clothes that were my granddad's. They're really precious because, you know, I, I know that, you know, they lived in these things. And again, I think that adds value to the things we own. These shoes, took time to wear in. You know, they've developed character by the wear that they've, they've had from me. Everyone seems to have been pulling their old shoes out of the wardrobes. Our repair service is actually busier than it's ever been. Well, I guess maybe people have got time to think about these things and... Um, it's time, know, to, time to value yeah, what time they've to, got. Time to, time to take stock. We, we get them incredibly damaged. The dog's got hold of them, ripped it to bits, you know. <laughs> Somehow they're looking, how the hell can we fix that? But they do yeah. find a way of fixing it. The Goodyear welting process is, is designed so that they can be easily resold and rehealed. You know, new sold. As these ones have. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we've, they've been resold once. And that's equally as important to us as, as selling new pairs. Repairing feels to me like an act of kindness to the planet you know every time you fix something you are reducing the number of new things that need to be made and that's a really wonderful and powerful thing that we can all do 
And also every time you fix something, it to me becomes more valuable. You know, I, I have more investment in this thing. Every you know, and I, I do fix things myself. I you know I I darn my sweaters, I patch things, and every time I go through that process, I love the thing more. But you know, you 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 can't fix things that aren't made well. Just like your shoes, our clothes are made in a way that they can be disassembled and put back together and be just as good as they were at the very beginning. People feel trapped in this cycle of buying cheap, disposable things because they don't feel like they can take that step. And that was what we tried to do with community clothing, was to, to try and find a way of making really high quality, locally made clothes that support good jobs in, in, in these communities and make it affordable to people because, and it's still, you know, relative to the very, very cheap brands, it's still relatively expensive. And we say, you know, we say in our adverts, our things are affordable, but people say, well, you know, 35 pounds for a sweatshirt isn't affordable. I can buy one for 20 quid. I say, well, you know, yeah, you, you can, but question what's gone into it and question who's been paid what to make it. We need to show people more about what it is that goes on inside our yeah. factory and yeah, we really your factory. Do. You know, and it's also really important that we attract, you know, younger and, you know, excited individuals into this business, um, whether it's in, you know, making textiles here in Lancashire, whether it's making footwear in, in Northampton, you know, it's a fantastic industry to learn. It's a trade and they actually are making something of, of value, you know, something yeah. that, that will be worn by people all over the world. Northampton is a shoe town, you know, Blackburn is a cotton town. That sense of identity is important to, to, to people too. And I am convinced that people who come and learn to make something will feel happier and more satisfied with their life than those people who go to work every day and pick products out of a basket for you know, an online retailer. I think there are a lot of young people who are very committed to living in a way that is positive for the planet. We have to go back to uh, a, a way of life where we see the things we buy as things we ought to keep and cherish. And, uh, and, and, I, and I feel like that is, that is starting to happen, but you know, we've got a long way to go yet. And I think if people you know, pay a little bit more, the most that they can afford and buy something that you know, has been made well, i.e. You know, a pair of shoes from Northamptonshire, or, um, you know, uh, clothes that you make here in, in, in Lancashire, you know, um, they'll treasure them, keep them, and they'll become items that they'll really love. Yeah, buy fewer things and buy good things and keep them and cherish them and repair them, and that is the, that is the solution.